Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel Franco, CEO and co-founder of Cassandra, the fastest and easiest incrementality measurement platform designed specifically for marketers. And with me, there is Nicolas Arrivé. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm Director of Operations and Partnerships at Cassandra. Today, we're going to dive into a topic about what's the best marketing mix model, a comparison between Robin and Meridia. As you probably may know, we just included both frameworks inside of our software in order to make it super easy for marketers to design and build marketing mix model and receive incrementality measurements using both of these frameworks. The first thing that you need to know in order to compare these two contenders is they use different type of statistics. Robin uses a frequentist methodology, while Meridian uses a Bayesian and hierarchical methodology. Now, in order to explain it, uh, we're going to do a really simple explanation and uh, Nick is going to share it. Yes, yeah, so two different statistical framework to look at a similar challenge. On one hand, with Robin, you have what we call a frequentist statistical framework. Essentially, what it does is it looks at historical data. And if you were to throw a dice, for instance, 100 times, and you record every single time what happened when you throw the dice, a frequentist approach will count literally how many times six landed out of those 100 times you threw the dice. On the other hand, a Bayesian framework will look at this problem and we'll have an a priori assumptions about the probability that a six will land if you were to throw the same dice 100 times. Now, at a high level strategic comparison, uh, Robin uses regularized regression with nonlinear transformation. And it uses also machine learning and reinforcement learning in order to figure out what are the parameters for every ad stock and saturation curve that uh, is going to estimate. Well, Meridian doesn't use reinforcement learning, but uses Markov chain Monte Carlo simulations in order to figure out what are these parameters. So they try to do the same thing with different methodologies. The only difference is while Robin, the only requirement that he has is using historical data, Meridian requires also prior setting. And priors in these contexts are technically the ROI belief that we have internally in the company that we need to include inside of the model on top of the historical data. As a best practice, in this case, we strongly suggest to use incrementality testing outputs in order to set these priors for Meridian because they represent the closest thing to ground truth that we can possibly estimate. Out of the box use of use and learning curve, I'm not going to explain how to use it in Cassandra because the Cassandra was designed to make it extremely easy even for people that don't know anything about statistics or coding. Going to be sharing it, how to use it by yourself as a salt service we're using the open source library. With Robin, uh, developed by the marketing science team in Meta, it's available in R and in Beta through Python API. It has a moderate flexibility you can use multiple ad stock functions, saturation functions. And uh, because he uses only the historical data and everything else is automatic, is the most user-friendly framework. So you can start the training without any priors and any incrementality tests needed. It's strongly suggested that you use them though, because again, the more data that is linked to ground truth you use, the better. It's ideal for companies that are just starting out with marketing mix modeling don't have a lot of data except from the historical one. And they want to have a first assessment quick about their incrementality and have a hypothesis of what could be the ROI of each channel. On the other hand, we have Reading, which is a Python based, ideal for teams that have high coding skills and some understanding of Bayesian statistic and probabilistic assessments. And um, it is a mildly customizable as a Bayesian framework. It supports hierarchical models for multi-market scenarios, which means that if you have a brand that has multi-market, training it with Meridian is way faster because you can train with one click, with one training iteration, and you can model multiple markets simultaneously, and you can see how they're working across multiple geos. Also, it has some additional tools in order to better estimate with less uncertainty uh, the diminishing returns curve and uh, address the incrementality effect of Google search. The learning curve is moderate because it requires a lot more interpretation on how to set it up. One thing that is extremely important is that while Robin, being frequentist, doesn't assess uncertainty by default, it uses different techniques like bootstrapping in order to address how much uncertainty there is in a model, Meridian is does uh, natively, which means that uh, we need to understand when we build a model that we're trying to measure the incremental effects but any incremental effects is going to have a level of uncertainty. When we use the budget allocator from both frameworks, we need to assess both the reward that they can get and the risk 
and certainty to raise in the prescription of the model. Now, in terms of adoption and community support, Robin is the oldest. It was the one, the first marketing mix modeling framework open source that was uh, shared into the market. It has the highest adoption. There is a really strong community. On the other side, there is Meridian, which is new, but it's the fastest growing right now, backed by Google. And uh, all the partners right now are working together in order to improve it really, really fast and make it affordable and really accessible for everybody. In terms of data preparation, this is probably the most important part of this process because this is the main difference. They both require at least 18 months of data at a weekly or daily level of total sales, spend media, organic, which are usually emails and SMS, and context variables can be promotions, discounts, or even weather, interest rates, etc. On top, there are non-required data that can be used in Robin. Robin, you can add impressions and you can link them to spend. And uh, you can add incrementality test results over time. So you, every time you retrain the model, you can add incrementality test result in order to calibrate the model. This is really, really important to do because if not, the model can actually show you a wrong picture of what is actually happening in your market mix. On the other side, you add Meridian. Now, Meridian can have also a multi-geo approach. So you're going to need for each geo, the spend, the emails, and the context variable, and the sales data for each geo. You can have impressions like Robin, which is fine. And if you connect to the MMM API from Google, you can add two additional metrics. One is reach and frequency, which is additional data used to better estimate, like I estimate with less uncertainty, the diminishing returns curve of all Google ads campaign. Well, on the other side, you have QVC, which is Google query volume. This is used in order to estimate a true incremental effect of Google search campaigns compared to the baseline sales that you would have generated without spending. And this is a really important factor because when you have Google search brand, you want to actually assess the true incremental effect that it generates instead of the sales that you would have generated without spending there. Meridian is calibrated with the closest estimation of ground truth measurement, because if not, it's going to show you wrong measurements, a picture that doesn't respect reality. Now, let's talk about data requirements and preparation. I'll give this uh, part to Nick. To make it really, really concrete, here is an example of the data set that you need to get started. So as Gabriel said, data set is the same for both Robin and Meridian. Here in this example, we have a CSV file where by day we get the revenue of the business, which is the KPI that we're trying to model. And alongside from left to right every day, we have information, spend or impressions for each marketing channels or marketing tactics associated with that day. Now, coming to best use cases, we rely on expertise at Cassandra and our experience with our clients. Of course, we always recommend that you consult with either Cassandra or someone you trust who has both a data science background and also a business acumen. We may oversimplify each use cases, but I think it's worthwhile keeping in mind a few important things. If you are starting with marketing mix models and you're trying to teach yourself and teach the organization you belong to about the benefits of marketing mix models, Robin is a great starting point. If you are able to refresh a model on a monthly basis with a new set of data, Robin is also great. Last but not least, if you have a media mix that is spread across online and offline, for instance, TV channel and online channel, Robin is also a great starting point. On the other side, Meridian offers great options. So let's start first with a typical business case where a business, a retailer, for instance, operates across multiple markets or multiple countries. Meridian might be very well suited for that business case. Also, if your media mix or marketing mix is heavily weighted toward Google properties, meaning you spend a large share of your marketing mix on pay search and or YouTube, Meridian is also a great fit. Why? Because you can add reach and frequency data and search query volume to really understand with precision the incremental benefits that YouTube as a channel or pay such as a channel helps from a business perspective. Last but not least, I think it's important to note that if you have historical incrementality test results, Meridian is also a great option because you can use these as priors to the model. Always consult with Cassandra or a trusted partner to make a final decision. When it comes to project timeline at Cassandra, we like to think about it along what you're seeing here on the screen. The first 30 days are essentially all about gathering the right data and, if possible, running an incrementality test on your largest channel. That should take about 30 days. Between 30 and 50 days, you should be able to build your first model, or like we said at Cassandra, iterate on at least one model 
to understand if it's rigorous, if it's accurate, and if you can interpret the results and make further decisions later on. And then between day 50 and day 90, it's time to do three things. Refresh your model on a regular basis, calibrate your model, and make decisions about how you should allocate your marketing budget across different channels. To summarize very simply, first 30 days are all about data input, incrementality testing. 30 to 50 days, it's all about building at least one model and understanding if you can interpret the output. From 50 days onward, it's all about calibrating and making decisions. Now, the integration of Meridian, Robin, and sort of Cassandra uh, was done in order to make it super accessible for marketers that have no technical expertise in order to adopt them, but also to ensure that every model is created is the most robust and can actually be used. Every time we train a model, which is Robin or Meridian or Future Frameworks, the important thing that needs to be done is train test split training. We need to do back testing on historical data. We need to do model stability. And all of the things are used in order to answer the following questions. Is my model forecasting accurately? Does the incremental ROI estimation match the incrementality test? And also, is the estimation of the market mix model ROI for each channel stable over time? If we see that the estimation is not stable, we automatically select those channels as the ones that need to be calibrated. And what it happens when we calibrate them using incrementality tests is we reduce the uncertainty in the overall model. So we reduce the risk in the budget allocator suggestions that they can actually provide. On Meridian, it is incredibly important, incredibly useful to have a multi-geo model because it allows you to have less uncertainty in the estimation of the overall sales that it generates. And if you add reaching frequency, it's super nice because uh, you're going to see diminishing return curve with way less uncertainty. Thank you a lot for staying with us on this video. Hopefully these informations are useful. Looking forward to see you inside of Cassandra. Thanks again for listening at Cassandra. We love building and sharing content. Thank you so much for listening. Please scan the QR code so you can get access to all the content we've created so far. Thank you so much.